Kratos knows your flaw, even if you do not. He knows how to study his enemies. Think, Percy. How has he manipulated you? First, your mother was taken from you, then your best friend, Grover, now my daughter, Annabeth. In each case, your loved ones have been used to lure you into Kronos' traps. Your fatal flaw is your personal loyalty, Percy. You do not know when it is time to cut your losses. To save a friend, you would sacrifice the world. In a hero of the prophecy, that is a very that that is very very dangerous. She's very stupid. In the first book, where he was going after his mother, he left her in the underworld because it was the right thing to do to go and warn all of the gods that Kronos was trying to come back. Mm -hmm. So he had no idea if he would ever see his mother again after that. So that sounds like somebody who knew when to cut their losses. And then in the second book, he does go after, you know, um, for um, Grover and everything. But like when they get to the end, he gives the, the golden fleece to Clarice and lets her go and bring it back to camp because he doesn't care if he's the one that does it. Yeah. And then in this book, the same thing, like, yeah, he goes after Annabeth, but he like purposely like does things to make everybody else feel safe and things like that. And doesn't put himself first. Like he holds the sky up because he lets other people win the fight that are actually better than him instead of him being the one to do it. Like he didn't run after Luke and try to kill Luke for kidnapping Annabeth or something like that. He let Thalia handle that stuff and what did not have a part in any of that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he actually does know when to like back off or he understands when, when like the things that he's doing, like when the people that he loves, he he's putting them in bad situations. He actively tries to make decisions not to do that. And mm -hmm. so it's like, that doesn't actually make sense when you just think, think about what he actually is like on these quests. Also, the reason why I say she's very stupid is because of Annabeth. Mm -hmm. Like Annabeth is the one. Annabeth is the one that is like literal putty in Luke's hands. Like mm -hmm. she is the one. Have you like ignore, is she like, to me, when I read this scene again, I was like, this is just a mom being like, it can't be my daughter's fault. She's too smart for this. It can't possibly be her, even though it is her. So mm -hmm. obviously it has to be you, little boy. Like you have to be the one that's actually the problem because it could never possibly be my daughter because that would make me look bad. My daughter is too smart. And so it's not possible that this could be happening with her, except that it is like, Annabeth is her 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 fatal flaw is definitely like hubris, but the way that it's coming out right now is that she is so sure that she can save Luke mm -hmm. because she's smart, and yeah. she just thinks, well, I can save Luke because Luke says he cares about me, and so even though I he almost just killed me and he's almost killed everyone that I love at this point multiple times, I'm sure that I can just do it because I think that I can, and like that is that is actually dangerous. Like that is her, her personal loyalty to Luke makes her so easy to manipulate. It's sickening how easy it is for him to manipulate her. And he just continues to do it when he's not even there. She's still fighting like his little battles at with like Percy and things like that. And at camp and talking to Percy and all this st sort of stuff. And so I'm like, actually, I'm pretty sure that it's your daughter that's the super vulnerable one that is making really, really bad decisions. The idea that he's being manipulated by Kronos even is not true because he's not being manipulated by him. Like he's not choosing to do anything with him. Like, yeah, Kronos has shows him scary dreams, but and they freak him out, but he never actually considers ever joining him. And so it's like, just because he's in that position doesn't mean that he's actually going to listen to him. And like, considering what he's done this far, there's no reason, there's no actual reason to believe that he would do that, except just it's easier to just not like him. Yeah. <laughs> because, but it's, it. this scene also is just such a slap in the face because the reason why it, Percy keeps going like in life in general is because of the people in his life that he loves.
Mm -hmm. the reason why he he like continues to live honestly and so like the idea that especially after everything that happens in this book which is so much that we're doing like an extra episode just to talk about it all because so much happens in this one book that the idea that he goes through all that he does in this book and then to get to the end for his one of his best friend's mothers to tell him to his face like the thing that has like kept you going all of this time the thing that like gets you through every single battle that you're in where you succeed is actually what makes you really dangerous and it's like the the like connections he has to his friends and his mom and things like that the even just wanting to protect the other demigods at camp they are like everything to him of course like he that's why he does everything that he does and you're telling somebody that one of the most important things about him actually makes him scary and that he would it might be the reason why he turns evil one day like that is so messed up sometimes people say things like if you go through abuse when you're a kid that it makes it means that you're way more likely to do it yourself when you're older and it's an oversimplified idea that a lot of abusers were victimized at some point in their life um Mm -hmm. but it that those things get into your head especially when you're first like dealing with everything like i was generally like terrified for many years of my life and there still is a little bit of fear like that every once in a while that i'm gonna like turn into my dad um like my one of my therapists had to teach me how to be angry because i was so terrified i was convinced that if i was angry i was going to turn into him that i would just be like him because he was my dad and if he was that angry then i have no choice but to end up like him and so like he literally had to like walk me through doing it and it scared the shit out of me like it was one of the scariest things i did in therapy so far was to learn how to do that um and like prove to myself just by doing it that i'm not going to turn into him even if i let myself be angry which i'm not but it's like that's that's what that basically is of her saying that to him is like actually the nice thing about you is secretly going to be the thing that makes you evil one day. And it's like, everyone is like talking about killing him. Like Annabeth's mom is saying that he's secretly evil. They're all talking about how bad and evil and horrible he is. And that he's going to turn against them one day. And he's just like this kid and he's never done anything that even gives you the idea that he would ever do something like that. Um, but they're all talking about him to his face like that. And those things do affect you. It just makes you feel like there must be something bad about me. Because if they're all saying this to me, they must be right. They must be seeing something that I don't see, which is basically his response to this conversation is, oh, Athena is supposed to be really smart. So she must know more about me than I know about me. And it's like, no, child, she's just a horrible person. (laughs) And she just is trying to find a way for anything to not be Annabeth's fault. And that's really what this conversation is, but it would, he doesn't know that. And I'm sure 18 year old Percy in the newest book still thinks that his fatal flaw is that he loves people, which is just like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Well, it's the whole point that I feel that Rick Riordan is trying to get to with placing Percy as is here, placing this person who has immense empathy for people, who cares about the people close to closest to him so much, is that it's not about the deeds. You know, it's never been about the deeds. It's about how you treat people. It's about how you move through this world. And um, you don't make your waves necessarily by those big bad things all the time. Sometimes it's what people think about you that really counts. 